welcome back to the channel. I'm Brittany. I'm Steven. And today we are bringing you another book to TV show analysis. If you have been around the channel, we have been doing a Nosferatu series. The TV show recently came out and so we did a whole series around this. It is a book originally by Joe Hill, Stephen King's son, and so we read the book, we reviewed the book, we have a reading vlog, and today we're going to do a deep dive into the differences between the book and the TV show, and what the TV show kind of got right in some areas where it might have missed the mark. So the way we've been structuring these videos lately is doing a pros and con list. So to kick off our pros, we wanted to talk about the tone of the show versus the book. And as you can probably guess, because it's in the pros section, we do think that they nailed the tone pretty well. It's very ominous, but still whimsical due to the Christmassy aspects of this story. And uh, I, just, I think they nailed it for the most part on the tone. Another thing I think the show got right was the antagonist. So... Charles Manx and Bing, both in this show, I think were a very good representation of what they were in the book. Thought they were very creepy. I felt like they nailed the little more personal parts of their history really well. And every time they're on screen, it definitely gave you an icky factor. I would, major shout out especially to Bing. I felt like the guy who played Bing just like exuded that weird creep factor, especially early on when you are seeing him and you don't know quite who he is yet and you're just like why is this guy giving me the creeps until suddenly eventually you're like oh that's why i completely agree i think that zachary quinto was also an excellent casting for charles manx he played the foreboding but also out of touch uh, villain very well. Something that we have praised about this book from the beginning is how well its villains are done. I find a lot of times villains can be just very cookie cutter and not to put in Christmas uh, puns, but <laughs> I just think that that is not the case with this story and that translated very well to TV. It was something I was nervous about the villains translating well and I do think that they pulled it off. Now something that they did change from the book that I am very happy about and I think was definitely needed was Maggie's increased role. In the book she definitely has a very important role but small and in this she was almost brought up to the level of a main character. Not quite, she was definitely still supporting character but she had a lot more like background story scenes, she just had a lot more screen time than she ended up having page time um, and we'll see how that goes going forward because this Season one is only about the first third of this book, so that may change as we go on, or maybe they'll increase her role even more, but I think that having her show up a lot more in this story was an excellent choice. I also really like the increased diversity of the show. Now, I don't think anyone is a fan of like forced diversity just for the sake of it, but I definitely think that changing certain details about a character in order to give them more depth or a more interesting backstory is always welcomed, especially in a book when you don't necessarily have time to really just dive into like little side characters and really get into their past. It's cool to see that in the show and there's definitely some characters that I think benefited from that. I really liked the changes they made to Maggie's character. I think that was really good and major spoiler for the end, I really felt like they you know, the big twist was they actually made Lou black. And I really liked that because that's not how I imagined him at all reading the book, but it was an interesting surprise. And I'm very interested to see where they take that character here on out. The book really has no people of color in it that it indicates on page this is the, you know, heritage or skin color of this specific person. They're all pretty much written as ambiguous or white. Um, so it was really cool for them to insert some uh, people of color in the show and I think that they were ac excellent castings as well. Another addition they made to the show uh, from the book that I thought was a really good choice was additional world building. Um, we get to dive into a little bit more of some strong creatives and their knives and their inscapes, which was really cool. We do get some tidbit hints of those in the book, but we never really get to spend time with them. They're just referenced, and we have a whole episode dedicated to it in this first season, which I thought was really cool, and it gave our main character a little bit more direction in her journey as well instead of just figuring everything out internally. It was a good translation from an internal on-page storyline to a visual um, showing and instead of telling internally, I thought. So going into the show, I was pretty skeptical about a TV studio's ability to bring Christmas Land to life because it's just so 
intense and vivid on page in this novel, this whole inscape of an amusement park with a moon with a face and a level of creepiness, even though it's Christmassy, it seemed it just seemed like something that was gonna be really hard to nail. But I actually think this TV show did a really good job. When we finally do get to Christmas Land in the back half of the season, I think it really just fits. And it really, to me, was just immediately what I had thought about while I was reading this book. And I think they did a really good job adapting it. They definitely took what I was picturing on page and literally put it on a TV screen, which is one of the coolest experiences as a book reader and a book lover for that to happen in an adaptation. And for all the things for them to pull off visually perfectly, that was the thing they needed to do. And I was very hesitant about the moon because I was reading mm -hmm. it and I'm like, how are you going to put this in a TV show? And they did it. And I was like, yes, that that was one in my brain. Thank you. It was, it was great. Now we're going to move into some critiques of this show, our cons, if you will, and starting with the pacing. Um, this show is on AMC, that is the network they chose to air it on, and it follows what Steven likes to call the AMC effect, which I totally agree with, where everything is just so slowed down, to the detriment of the storytelling at certain points, in my opinion. The first half of the season is so slow that you almost like lose interest as people who are familiar with the source material we know what's coming so it's easier to you know stick with the slower bits because you know what's coming next but for people who are not familiar with the source material i wouldn't have blamed them for dropping off this show after the first one or two episodes because you just don't know where it's going and it's just such a slow crawl and then the second season or second half of the season really picks up and really has that better pacing um, to storytell and to keep your interest and intrigue, but by that point you might have already lost a bunch of your audience who weren't willing to stick around that long. And with that slowed down pacing across all these episodes, they had to figure out how to fill the time, which results in filler content. So, a good story is tight and streamlined. It has necessary details and maybe just enough fluff to, like, put an interesting trim on your story. And I feel like the novel is actually very tightly written. There's not a whole lot of room to wander off and to get lost in the details of something else. And this show did not keep that. It definitely wandered, and especially in the first half of the season, it felt like they were trying to save all the cool stuff for the second half like we mentioned. And so they put a lot of filler in, especially between Vic and her family. And while character drama can be interesting and increase the depth of those characters and make us care more, I felt like it kind of failed in that respect. I think that they spent way too long on it, and it was like every scene when they moved away from the main plot to have like them argue, it was like literal eye roll. We were both like, ugh. And it was like 15, 20 minute scenes, like these hard character scenes of people just talking to each other about nothing important to the actual plot. And I think that ends up being disappointing. And another thing might make someone drop off the show, and especially if they don't know what's coming up later. Between the pacing and the filler that they had to put in to make up for the pacing changes, it just felt like we took what a story that is essentially both character and plot driven pretty equally, in my opinion, to shifting to a much more character driven story. And I just think that it didn't translate as well in that first half of the season because of that shift. So I've already mentioned a couple of book source material changes that they made that I really liked and they made one that I really hate and I'm very hesitant about the future seasons due to this change and that is Vic's pregnancy change. At the end of this story you learn that Vic is pregnant with Lou's child and that's very important for the rest of the story. It uh, matters a lot for their relationship, it matters a lot for the finale um, and they made it to where she is not pregnant with Lou's child. She's pregnant with some other random dude's child that was inserted into the story and didn't need to be and tragically died so you're like sad and whatnot and like it gave Ashley Cummings an awesome scene in the TV show but at the end of the day wasn't needed and I'm upset that her and Lou don't have that connection and it almost seems like they're going to make the relationship platonic going forward which I have a real big problem with so I'm unhappy about that change. The show also decided to make some changes to Vic's character. We get a lot more time with Vic than we do in the novel in her adolescent phase because of how they stretch this story out for an entire season of TV. And 
I really didn't like some of the changes they made with her. In the book, she comes across very smart, but also very edgy. She really doesn't take shit from anyone. She is pretty angry, and you see that a lot in her character. And in this show, she loses a lot of that. I actually found that her character was very passive for most of this story, um, really going along with it. Other characters would like throw stuff in her face, and she'd just be like, that's not fair, and like walk off. And I was like, that is not what the Vic of the novel would have done or reacted. And I'm hoping that moving forward after her experiences in this first season, we get to see her character shift a little bit and to have some more of that edge because I really like that like hardened, badass character of Vic in the novel because I think it's very important for how she responds to the future traumas and the other things that happen in the book. And without that, it just kind of seems like someone being victimized consistently, and I don't think that that is as enjoyable of a story to watch. I'm very nervous about how they're going to go forward with Vic and Lou's relationship between both of these changes that we just mentioned. Lou is the antithesis to Vic, and right now they kind of match up. Like, Lou in the book is very sweet and kind of a pushover and kind of a doormat, but like, oh, such a, like, cinnamon roll. And Vic is just this, like, edgelord who does not like anybody, and she softens for Lou. And so you're not going to have that dynamic going forward. So I just, I think there's going to be a lot more changes from the source material based on these two changes in the season one. I think what's also really important is in the book, Vic is a very deeply flawed character and is not supposed to be wholly likable. So you still root for her and support her, but you understand that there's like some very deep rooted problems with how she responds to things. But this show took all that away. So yeah, it'll be interesting to see how she responds to other things in the future, how her relationships form when she's kind of a pretty good person at this point. So the question, as with all of our analysis videos, is was this a good adaptation? Yes and no. I think more yes than no, um, but I do think like we just talked about, a lot of the no's are going to greatly impact the story going forward, at least that is our theory. Um, so I think season one as its own little bubble Mostly a good adaptation, especially with the visual, especially with the villain. I think that having the setting, the tone, and the villain be spot on is going to do wonders for the show going forward, and it did wonders for the season one, and that's what edges out my cons for it to be more of a yes, it's a good adaptation, but they just changed so much that I can't wholeheartedly say that it was a good and faithful adaptation. Yeah, I would say through the first, like, five-ish episodes of this show, I was like, this is an awful adaptation. Same. I hate everything <laughs> about it, and I almost want to quit, but I won't, because we're doing a series on it. We've read the book. We reread it. This is one of our favorite novels, so we're like, we'll get through it, at least the season, see how it goes. And then the second half was so strong, and they had so many strong scenes from the book just right into the show, and so many crazy cool things happen, and to see that... It really like saved some of that for me and was like, okay, there's a lot of good here as well. So it's definitely a mixed bag for me and I think time will truly tell with this show, with a season two, if they can overcome some of the AMC effect and create a more streamlined plot or at least fill it with more interesting things. They did have some subplots like the world expanding of, of the lore that were very interesting and then they had some not so interesting, you know, little subplots they added in. So it just depends on what they do with it. While we were watching the first half of this se this first season, I was really nervous about this getting canceled. I did not think this was getting a season two. Honestly, even after finishing the season, I didn't think we were going to get a season two. Based on the network it's on, based on the very small following that this had before it became a TV show, like this was a fairly unknown book in a lot of the circles that we run in in terms of book fans. So it just didn't have that like cult following that a lot of like say Stephen King things do and I'm very very happy that they're having a season two even with our hesitancies I'm very interested to see what they do with the story I love the actors I love how they've casted this so I'm interested to see how it gets further brought onto screen but that's it for this series at least until season two comes out 
Um, let us know down in the comments below what you guys thought about this show or the book. This is a spoiler video, so you can talk about as many spoilers as you want down there. Make sure you leave a like if you enjoyed this. We love making these series, and we're going to keep doing them, so hopefully you enjoy them. But that lets us know. And subscribe, because we have more stuff on the way, and we'll see you guys next time.